pretty much every single big name free agent was signed just a couple of hours after the market opened on July 1st, which led to a very hectic first day of free agency, but it also led to things dying down very quickly. The signings at this point are few and far between. That being said, there's definitely still some pretty interesting names on the market. So for today's video, I wanted to go over my list of players that in my opinion are the best still available in free agency and talk a little bit about the players and where they may end up signing. This list is in no particular order. And as always, I want to know what you guys are thinking. So be sure to let me know your predictions down below in the comments for where you think the players we talk about in today's video are going to end up signing. And if this is your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year round, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're getting very close to 80,000. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and start off with the first player on my list. We have right shot defenseman Adam Boakfist, who was a surprise addition to the free agent market after the Columbus Blue Jackets decided to buy out the remaining year of his contract just one day before free agency began. Adam Boakfist is still just 23 years old. He was the eighth overall draft pick by the Chicago Blackhawks in the 2018 NHL draft and was then traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets as part of the Seth Jones deal. He's a guy that's really struggled to stay healthy over these last few seasons, but when he's been in the lineup, he's definitely shown flashes of that high offensive upside that made him the eighth overall selection back in 2018. In the 2022-23 season with the Columbus Blue Jackets, Boakfist scored at above a half point per game pace in 46 games, and the year prior, he scored double digits in goals in just 52 games. At this point, I feel like it's safe to say Boakfist is never going to be a top pairing defenseman or a guy that plays tough matchup minutes and shuts down the opposing team's top players. That's just not his game. He's not overly physical either, but at just 23 years old, I definitely still believe Adam Boakfist is a guy worth taking a chance on, on a one-year deal for a team that maybe doesn't get a whole lot of offensive production from their blue line or could use a defenseman to quarterback a power play. A team that really stands out to me as a fit for Adam Boakfist is the San Jose Sharks, who currently don't even have a right shot defenseman signed through next season that's expected to play NHL minutes. And when you look at the guys they do have signed, who's going to be the defenseman playing on the power play? It was Henry Thrun at times this past season. I think Jake Wallman is capable of doing it, but if they were to sign somebody like Adam Boakfist, I think he would immediately become their best option to quarterback the power play. After being bought out by Columbus and considering the time he's missed over these last couple of seasons, I can't imagine Boakfist is going to be a guy that's going to command a whole lot of money, maybe something like a one-year, $1 million deal, which will be a low-risk, high-reward move, and one that I think is worth making if you're the San Jose Sharks. Moving on now to the next player on my list, we have Daniel Sprong, who had a previous cap hit of $2 million with the Detroit Red Wings. I imagine his next deal is going to come in relatively cheap as well, especially now that the majority of teams have spent quite a bit of their cap space. Sprong should definitely be a very intriguing option for any team that's looking for some depth scoring in their bottom six. He's not really your traditional fourth line winger in the sense that he is not good defensively, isn't going to kill penalties, doesn't have much of a physical element to his game, and isn't great on the forecheck. But one thing Daniel Sprong does do very well, better than a lot of players in the NHL, is produce offense very efficiently despite playing limited minutes. This guy feasts on easy matchups. This past season, Daniel Sprong finished ahead of players like Brock Besser, Kyle Connor, Matt Boldy, and Tim Stutzla in even strength points per 60 minutes. Two teams that come to mind as a potential fit for Daniel Sprong, Western Conference contenders like Vegas and Colorado, two teams that are very tight to the cap and that I think could really use the cheap depth scoring. Moving on now to the next player on my list, we have Tyler Johnson, who spent the last few seasons as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks, a previous cap it of $5 million. Over these last few seasons, Tyler Johnson's underlying numbers have really fallen off. However, this past season with the Blackhawks, the finishing was actually quite good. He managed to score 17 goals in 67 games, the most goals he scored in a single season since 2019. Similar to what I said about Daniel Sprong, I think Tyler Johnson would be a decent option for some teams that are tight to the cap and looking for cheap depth scoring. After this season ended, Tyler Johnson reflected on his time with the Blackhawks and he said that it wasn't what he envisioned or what he wanted. Going from a team like Tampa Bay where he did so much winning to a team like Chicago where he did a whole lot of losing, I don't think Tyler Johnson took too well to that. So you have to imagine Tyler Johnson is going to be looking to go to a contender or at the very least a team with playoff aspirations and in order to ensure he gets an opportunity to go to a team where he has a chance to win, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Tyler Johnson sign a very cheap deal, something like one year, one million, or maybe even less. Next up on my list of some of the best players still available in free agency, we have Philip Zadina, who really bet on himself this past season, left guaranteed money on the table with the Detroit Red Wings, agreed to terminate his contract so that he could go sign with a team like the San Jose Sharks, where he'd get an opportunity to play consistent minutes in the NHL, and he did. He appeared in 72 games this season 
with the Sharks and scored a career-high 13 goals, but ultimately did not do enough to earn himself a qualifying offer from the San Jose Sharks, thus making him an unrestricted free agent now for the second offseason in a row. It feels like time is really running out for Philip Zadina. I think this is a player that needs to reinvent himself if he wants to have a long career in the NHL. At this point, I think it's safe to say he's never going to turn into the top six forward that he was expected to be when the Red Wings selected him sixth overall in 2018. His play style really isn't suited all that well for a bottom six role. He's not good defensively. He isn't physical, isn't all that effective on either special teams, which again, I think has to change if he wants to have a long NHL career because it's not like he's putting up the kind of offensive production in the bottom six where it's like, okay, we have to keep this guy in the lineup. He's not on the level of someone like Daniel Sprong who's able to go out there and feast on easy matchups. I think in all likelihood, Philip Zadina ends up signing somewhere on a one-year deal for maybe 900k or even league minimum. It's kind of hard to pinpoint a certain team that would be a good fit for Philip Zadina. At this point, you're kind of just hoping there's going to be a team out there willing to give him one more chance, and I definitely think there will be. I feel like he was at least good enough this past season in San Jose to earn another look. Like I mentioned, he did score a career-high 13 goals, and the only players that are still free agents that scored more goals this past season are Joe Pavelski, who I think we all expect to retire, Vladimir Tarasenko, Daniel Sprong, and Tyler Johnson. Speaking of Vladimir Tarasenko, he is the next player on my list, and in my opinion, far and away the best free agent left on the market if you're not including Joe Pavelski, which I'm not because, again, I think the expectation there is he's going to retire. Tarasenko is coming off the season in which he scored 23 goals and put up 55 points in 76 games between the Florida Panthers and the Ottawa Senators, had 9 points in 24 playoff games for Florida, and obviously became a two-time Stanley Cup champion. Wouldn't be surprised if it's still a little while before we see Tarasenko sign somewhere. I think last year it was over a week into free agency before we saw him sign a one-year $5 million deal with the Ottawa Senators. Considering the fact that he's coming off the season in which he was playing on just a one-year deal, you have to imagine Tarasenko probably wants a bit of term on his next contract, maybe two, three years in the range of four, 4.5 million would be my guess. A team that immediately jumps out to me that makes a lot of sense as a fit for Tarasenko is the Carolina Hurricanes. After losing Gensel and Taravainen in free agency, and we still don't know what's going to end up happening with Martin Natchez, I definitely think they could use the help on the wing. Obviously, Vladimir Tarasenko isn't the elite top line 35 to 40 goal scorer that he once was, but still a very solid offensive middle six winger with a great shot. Definitely struggles a bit defensively, but that's another reason why I think Carolina makes some sense as a fit for Tarasenko because they play such a strong, structured team defense similar to the Florida Panthers. Continuing on now, next up on my list, we have right shot defenseman Justin Schultz, who has spent the last two seasons as a member of the Seattle Kraken and had a previous cap it of $3 million. At this point in his career, not somebody who's going to eat a ton of minutes, but still a decent puck mover and definitely a guy that's capable of putting up solid offensive production in a sheltered role. Similar to what I said about Adam Boakfist, I think San Jose makes some sense as a fit for Justin Schultz. They don't have any right shot defensemen signed through next season that are expected to play NHL minutes. Heading into the offseason, it was reported that San Jose was going to be in the market for some veteran defensemen. Maybe a guy like Justin Schultz could make some sense for them. Obviously, San Jose doesn't really have the personnel on the blue line to be able to shelter his minutes, but on a one-year deal or something, maybe the Sharks could look to use Justin Schultz in a top four role, try to inflate his stats a little bit, and then try to flip him for an asset at the trade deadline. And now finally, finishing out the video with the last player on my list of the best NHL players still available in free agency, we have Jack Roslovic. Roslovic began this past season with the Columbus Blue Jackets, was traded to the New York Rangers at the deadline, had a previous cap hit of $4 million. Roslovic is a fast, skilled, playmaking middle six forward that can play center or the wing. Wasn't really the answer the New York Rangers were looking for in the top six, but he's definitely a guy that I think can be very useful on a team's third line in the right situation with the right line mates. He's still only 27 years old, so I wouldn't be surprised if a team's willing to give him a two or three year deal. I think Utah makes some sense as a potential fit for Jack Roslovic. They still have a ton of cap space, some open roster spots. I like the idea of Roslovic centering a third line between some skilled forwards like Josh Doan and Matias Michelli. So that is going to wrap up today's video going over some of the best NHL players still available in free agency. As always, I want to know what you guys are thinking, so be sure to let me know your predictions for where the players we talked about in today's video are going to end up signing. If you made it all this way to the end of the video and you ended up enjoying yourself, please remember to leave a like. It definitely does help out the videos a ton, and it's the best way to let me know that you enjoyed. And most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year round, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you all again soon.